What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is a Third Person Podcast. I'm Chris. That's Mike. What's up? And I'm sure, as you can see, we have a third person today. It's yes, Nathaniel Moon himself. Yes, we do. Sherman Augustus. I'm can, you a butterfly. <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> he eats butterflies hey for breakfast. <laughs> I'm a butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Sherman, thank you so much for being on our show. We are absolutely oh, humbled and honored to have you on here. Absolutely. Honestly, guys, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I really do. Oh, uh, we do, man. Really you, do. Your time, we, yeah, awesome. So, so guys, we're we're here. Let's we're going. We're going to talk to Sherman. We're going to talk about Moon. We're gonna we're gonna recap a little bit of, of season three A, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get inside a little bit of Sherman. We're gonna see. We're gonna try to ask him some 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 nice questions to see if we can some fun stuff, some get some good stuff. Right? So um, I'll, tr- I'll try to take it to the line and not spill too much. But let's do this. <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, so, uh, first off, uh, let's, let's, let's just get into Moon, all right? So, okay. you know, he comes back and, you know, we know he, you know, we were all wondering, is, is he going to kill Sonny? Like, what, what's right, going to happen? Right, like, we right. know he came back for one reason. Uh, y- you were essentially a Ronin. You decided, you, she, you know, uh, the widow comes to you and says, come be my regent. You were on, right. you were on the outs. You were like, you know what? What was that like? You, what, what was that like for Moon? What did he, what was he thinking? What, what, what I was thinking, you know, because I had to revisit the whole thing again, you know, I had to start, you know, I started learning more about his backstory, you know, as we were getting closer and closer to leaving and heading over to uh, Dublin for, for fight camp. So what I do, I usually have these meetings with myself. I always let the character evaluate me, right? <clears throat> because what's written, I didn't write it, you know, and I have to make it as, as close and personal as I can, you know. Right. Um, So in order for me to connect with the material, connect with the other actors and have a real moment, you know what I mean? Because acting to me is just acting is reacting and it's organic and it's in the moment. So with that being said, I reevaluated everything and start processing all the stuff because I was getting uh, Alan Miles would only give me little tidbits, if anything at all, for me to build with. So I just wanted to keep myself open and honest and and, um, just ready to... um, receive and distribute whatever information that they wanted, but in a way that I knew that was close to me and more or less more of Moon and then therefore uh, folks that, you know, connected with him uh, will, you know, gain more information and, you know, uh, go go along with his journey. So uh, the reevaluation process goes like this. I would always ask myself questions. I would let Moon ask me questions about how to get him off the page and what have I been through in the last six months, seven months of my life personally that I can add to him so that can show. So um, so with that, with that said, as soon as I started getting information when we got to fight camp about, okay, we're going to open the season with a fight between you and the widow. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, OK, this is going to be real interesting. Yeah. And then I ran into Alan Miles one day. I was just taking a walk around town and ran into him. And they were like, we're going to put a lot of we're going to put you under a lot of pressure the first four episodes, four or five episodes, maybe six. I'm like, yeah. who bring it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so when we got close to shooting uh, that uh, the tower scene, the, the moon tower scene, uh, you know, my process is it started getting thicker and thicker and thicker because we started getting more information. So script came out I'm looking at the script and I'm looking at all this stuff and uh, that we were going to do in action. So I pretty much knew um, Emily and I pretty much got together one day and just said, look, what's in the script? It's not going to happen. You know, because <laughs> Master Didi, Master Didi wasn't there yet. Yeah. So we knew once Master Didi got there that whole thing was going to change. Throw it out. Yeah. Yeah. He's just, yeah, he's just going to throw all that out. And we only have at best, if you get 20 minutes to learn the core, the fight Corey, Corey, really? if you get 20 minutes. And if you do get 20 minutes to learn it, then you're good. That's like three, four years wow. in, in, in bad land uh, <laughs> terms. Yeah. And, uh, because everything is quick and you don't want to let anyone down because you have a whole crew, you know, you have, we do two crews. We have a fight unit and a, drama unit so and there are two two full crews and you do two shows at the same time that's another thing so you do them in blocks which is totally alien to me when 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 i first started the show but now everybody's doing this uh that you know netflix hulu those guys they do that stuff um so you know when we got into it uh i was able to get and gain more information about the character and where he was coming from and what he was doing the new stuff that was sprung on me was the region thing 
Ooh. Right. So, again, I had to go back and develop this whole thing where when Nathaniel became a cog, then a uh, a clipper, then a regent. Right. And he, he wasn't forced into it. Uh, my thing was he willingly went into it, you know, three square meals a day hanging out, you know, and then it got to a point. OK, I'm killing people. OK, it's not too bad. <laughs> OK, I'm killing people. It is bad, you know. Yeah. So um, he does have a conscience, but he's very loyal. So the whole thing about sequestering oneself, that's what he was doing when he bumped into Baji and uh, Sonny on that bridge. But he heard about them escaping. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically he was collecting bounties on people trying to collect a bounty on them. Right. For some reason or just just killing them out the way. Right. And um after that whole situation, when they had their uh, disagreement, yeah. uh, again, he's still a disgraced Ronin, and he yeah. goes and he sequesters himself at the tower. Meanwhile, people are finding out about, okay, well, he's only got one arm now, and uh, he's got to fight with his weak hand. So, well, they thought uh, you were some chump at that point. That was the thing. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no. So, so he goes and he makes him a, a rhubarb claw, right. you know. And so, you know, yeah. one, guy, so one guy on... One guy on uh, some podcast called me uh, Captain Hook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was double, though. It wasn't just one. Yeah, it that was, had yeah, the double yeah, it on there. Yeah. It, it was double hook was right there. And it was that thing was heavy. What? Oh, that, that looked thing like was, that thing. That so thing it, was heavy. It really but wasn't like a like a prop prop. Like it was like they a, made they made two they a made, heavy okay. one. Yeah. And uh, a real one and a fake one, but they can swap out the uh, the rebar, you know, because it had to like you know. Well, shoot down my arm. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is which is so cool. That is just yeah. so cool. Well, you have a big you know, change I, now with the claw now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, from the claw it, to the to the hand. It it it, it, it was really it, which made a, a big difference because you know I had that thing on all damn day long. So I'm trying to like do everything <laughs> with my left. Eat lunch with my left. Oof. Go to the bathroom with my left. Oh, right. Shit. You know, and butt my butt my pants. So I didn't want to be walking up to. Uh, our, our lovely wardrobe people go, hey, could you help me yeah, out? You know, yeah. you know. So they had to start taking that thing on and off all the time. Yeah. Uh, and so the glove thing, uh, the glove hand and the gauntlet came in real handy. So there was different variations of that. There was a rigid, hard one yeah. that I can use to block. So when I had the uh, the fight with uh, MK, right. you know, I had to do all that block and stuff. So literally, he was swinging for the fences, Oof. and I'm blocking. Yeah, then I'm blocking with that thing. So right. it, that worked out. Then there's a softer version. Um, and you know, it got better and better as it progressed, but going back to your question, um, I think that with, with Nathaniel, um, you know, he was still carrying the burden of his wife and child being killed. And that's why he kept sequestering himself. And then we got the whole new, uh, backstory with him and Lydia when he was a regent. That's good. And that, yeah, that, and, that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then that made me, you know, sit down again and have Nathaniel. OK, why did you leave? Well, she, I wanted her to go with me, but she didn't want to go. And so yeah. that came up. And so when we started having conversations about it, that made its way into the dialogue, which is cool, Yeah, that, which yeah. is really cool. You well, know, it seems like they're going to be doing a lot of teaming up now. Lydia. Yeah. And, See, and I, 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 I almost I almost like spilled the beans right? a couple of like. <laughs> When you guys were like, you know, saying, okay, now we have, you know, the Black Lotus. <laughs> we have now, uh, you know, Pilgrim is, is a, uh, basically a god now. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. And so it gets, I can't say this. So now you're going to start seeing alliances, right? Yeah. So back to the question uh, that you ask, and I, I, I know I digress, but, the, you know, fine. it's just okay. all, it's okay. all this information that's that needs to be out there. Absolutely. Yeah. All this information that, that just comes with one one question. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the thing of it is, is before we before I left last August, I did not want to go back and play this guy one note because, you know, I have you guys, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 looking down the barrel, you know, because he can't be one note for, for one reason. I didn't want to go back and have him. I got to kill Sonny. I got to kill Bachi. I got to kill right, Sonny. Yeah. You know, then again, um, as a warrior, you're you're clouding yourself, and anything that comes along, your judgment, your better judgment is not going to, you know, uh, be working for you. You know, you're going to work against yourself. You right. know, and especially if you get in a skirmish with somebody. You know, in, in any kind of skirmish or anything like that or any fight, uh, you're supposed to be relaxed. You're supposed to be at the most relaxed 
place in your mind mm-hmm. in your body and your soul you know yeah. and any any other place so and you can see things clearer clearer and um so you know i thought about that i thought about my professional football uh uh career when i would you know be pissed off at somebody or, or angry at somebody or i'm getting ready to play somebody i have a grudge against you know you have to let those go and know your assignment and it's the same thing with being a martial artist you know yeah. you just that's what got me into martial arts and we'll talk about that in a minute yeah. uh, and uh, I just felt that it was important for me not to uh, be you know concentrating on killing Baji killing Sonny that whole thing because then it narrows my vision and where I wanted to go sure if I ran into him then we're going to take care of business but if not that's fine. I'm right. just going to try to figure out everything and, and navigate my way through this this new land that we're living in. You know, this 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 new world. Yeah. You know. And then another thing, I think what brought me back, what brought him back, is the idea of connecting, or t- to see if he can integrate himself back into a so-called normal society, what normal is at the time. Right. Was that thing? You know. And if he yeah. dies on the battlefield for the widow, that's. Fine. That's fine, right? Yeah, because yeah. that's because yeah, he wanted like he gets he feels he has that redemption. Exactly, exactly. Right. Then that's his way out because you know I read a lot of stuff where people were a little upset uh, about uh, episode eight when you know we're fighting on the front. Well, the <laughs> thing of it is, what I was saying to myself uh, as an actor, if I do die here, it's because I am trying to give Gaius the widow and Tilda enough time to get in and kill Child. Yeah. So if that's how I go out, that's fine. As long as we hold the line right. and they don't make their, their way to the sanctuary. Yeah. So that was the whole thing. And maybe that could have been explained a little more. Um, maybe that could have been explained in dialogue. But I think, you know, the savvy folks got it when, yeah. when Moon says, no matter what, hold the line, no matter what. Yeah. I think the you whole know? thing, I think the whole thing from when he let, uh, you know, Baji and, 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 I was gonna say I was gonna say Danny, <laughs> yeah. Sonny. When when they let when you when he let him go, right? You let him go, and then all the way up to that point, like like we like right away. In again with Sonny, in that first line, you you know like you're like you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna orphan this kid. You know, yeah. like he yeah. he didn't let his he didn't make the same mistake. He wasn't gonna let the same mistake happen because what happened to him? Yeah. He understands and he respects Sonny at least to the point where he's like, I'm not gonna orphan your kid. You know, yeah. it was also cool that Sonny was like, well, then he's you're going to take him. He was like, yeah, okay, you're, you know you're, what? he's your little boy now. <laughs> yeah. and I got to tell you that a lot of that was not in the script. That oh, was nice. worked out right there on the spot. Really? Oh, you cool. know, our directors are so cool. Tor Frazier and, and Paco and those guys are just so cool. And we work everything out. We work every if it's not working and we had to find a way to where because Daniel was the same way. He was like, dude, I mean, this shit should be over between us like this. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, here's your sword, you know. And okay, you strike me down with your sword, then basically, you know what? The kid is yours. Don't give him to Baji, please. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. give him to Baji. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Baji has other things yeah, on right. his head, you know. So no, that's how we work. We worked that out on the day, and it worked out very that's well. That's crazy. All right, um, you know, it's it's great because you you answered so many questions that <laughs> we were either going to ask or potentially ask. Well, it just falls in. I mean, that whole thing just yep. falls in. So I'm like, you know, I'm getting so good at this now. I can just say, okay, this is right. the deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, and it, and it's all it's all relative. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, what else? I mean, I you know, I was gonna say that 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 moment that you talked about where he's where Moon's like, look, I, if I die here, that's great. And to yeah. me and Mike were like that. It's this show is like a comic book. It's a living comic yeah. book to me. You it know is. what I mean? It, it just it, it just is. absolutely. And that right there was such a hero, heroic and it summed up Moon's character. You know, even after he got to hook up with with um, you know I was gonna say Orla. <laughs> I'm, why I'm saying everyone's oh, really- <laughs> oh it it, it gets it gets it gets heavy guys. It gets real heavy in the next eight. Trust uh, me. Yeah, it well, gets real heavy. I, I, I got to tell you, the first eight is nothing compared to the second eight. Oh. It's nothing, nothing. Not only that they take the brakes off, they clip the brake line and it's yeah. going downhill. Yeah, and yeah, the reason yeah. being is because there's going to be another new group coming in. Yeah. And then there's something that you guys had went over a while back ago. I think it was last season that you said something. You guys said something. And when it happens at the end of 16, 
I want to see your faces. Oh my god, we got all it. you're gonna do is this. <laughs> so let, let, gonna, we're going back and watching all our other videos. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you guys are gonna go. Okay, who's hitting? Okay, somebody hit me with a bat because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's gonna be crazy. You guys, wait till you see. It's oh, gonna it's gonna wait. take it to wait. another. There's another new. There's a, a new character coming in. Yeah. There's two new characters Ooh, coming. I love in. new characters. And and they're so pivotal pivotal that. Well, you'll see. All right, you'll all right. see. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see. I wanted to. I wanted to ask you. Um, you've been in numerous, numerous uh, fights in in the show, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, which Which was your favorite to, to shoot? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I don't have a favorite. I don't no. have a favorite. They probably I all like, had their own, right? They all had their own. I mean, you know, what shocked me was uh, a couple of months after we shot. Uh, the scene with Daniel and I, when we had our fight scene, he goes, yeah, that's my favorite fight scene I've ever done yeah. on the show. And I'm like, get out of here, man. Are you kidding me? Oh. And so I really, for season three, I really, there's moments, but there's mm-hmm. not a favorite fight scene. Right, how about moment? What's, you know? your, what's one of your favorite moments? Cause I know there's one of many, my favorite right? moments. One of my favorite moments. There's so kills? many. I just, I just, I can't uh. one, two, three, four, five them up. All right. Favorite kill. Um, Oh man, favorite putting kill. Putting you on the spot. Putting you on the spot. Oh. oh, favorite kill is when I cut the dude's head and kicked it off. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that was that's so, it. That's, that's, that was so that's dope. the kill, man. That's that the was kill. so dope. Yeah. Not only do you cut his head, you kick right. it off. Yeah, that's right? some Mortal Kombat right there. Is what you're exactly. At. Yeah. Finish him. Okay. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know. All right. Um, I would say one of the. I love the fact that when I fought um, Tilda and MK. Yeah. With um, Aramis and Allie, they're quick. <laughs> they're very quick. Yeah. And um, I like those, those, I like both of those because they were very quick and it was just happening and it was in the moment and yeah. it was just so cool, you know. And everybody picks up their, you know, the choreograph like that, you know, yeah, their, yeah, their right. stuff. And, and it's right. just, it's just, boom, it's done. And that was so much fun, you know, because with Aramis, it was open hand. It was, yeah. it was hand against sword, yeah, you yeah. know, which was cool, which, yeah. which was, which was, was cool. It, that was a, that was a good scene to do. I that was, de- and that was, it looked good. Trust me. It looked good. Uh, it, yeah. it was dope. It, it was good. dope. Yeah, you know, absolutely. you know, uh, even Master D looked at me like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to, it was cool. I wanted to, to, to say, um, we, if, if for you that don't know, Sherman was a former NFL football player. How do you compare the training, the preparation of a season to preparing for a fight or the fight camp in, in the show? It's a, it's a mental process. process. Uh, basically, you have to get yourself physically ready. Yeah. Uh, and uh, fight camp was just like going into training camp. You know, we went from nine in the morning to six in the afternoon and we did three weeks of that. Um, and, you know, you had an hour lunch. And it's just like, you know, when you're playing pro ball, you have meetings to go to. You have to watch films and all that kind of stuff and learn yeah. stuff and go through your, your playbooks. And, you know, you learn in, you know, if you're a secondary field man or, 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 or if you're making the tackle, you know, certain stunts and, and whatever's happening up front, whatever you, whatever the guys are doing, the linemen are doing, you're stunning your linebackers are covering the zone or whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing because um, with our show – you know, I really had to just break it down to where we were learning a dance routine. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's just like any dancer was trying out for a Broadway show. They show you it and then you do it yeah. right then and there. And oh. that's how that's how we operate on the show. It's just OK. There's no two days or three days to do this. You know, the process, this whole thing. Football or any sports, you get a chance to do that because you're going to practice for a while and then play <laughs> your game. Right. No, no, no. You show up. You know what you're doing, and they work it out, and you learn it in pieces, okay. and then you go shoot it. And is that's it, why it takes eight to nine days to shoot. An average fight scene takes eight to nine days. Okay, because you're doing it in pieces. Is it easier you're that way it. than to learning it, say, like the week before and then practicing it over and over? Yeah, we, we just don't have time to. There's just oh, no yeah, time to. There's just, I mean, you know, they just don't right? have time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they just don't have time to. Even though we don't move at, at the pace of a regular, you know, procedural television show on, mm-hmm. on you know, CBS, NBC, ABC, that kind of thing. Uh, still, uh, there's just so many components involved and everything has to move. As far as saying dialogue and doing fight scenes and stuff like that, we're never rushed. We okay. get it until yeah, we get yeah. it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's just like it's just like shooting a movie. And actually, that's what we shot four movies is what we Basically, did. Basically, yeah. yeah. Basically, we shot four movies. Yeah. 
And uh, I mean, we all loved it and everything. Weather was, I mean, you know, we're glad we're, when we go back, we're going to be back <laughs> there this time next year. Yeah. So we be, we'll be shooting then. So um, it's, it's, it's just interesting that, um, you know, the dichotomy is kind of the same a little bit there. But I think with any sports team or anything, regardless if it's Pee Wee League or, or, or professional, you have time to work out the system and learn the system. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when, when Babu and Ella Ray uh, and Dean, you know, they came in, you know, they came to fight camp and it was a little rough for them, yeah. you know. But the minute they did that scene at uh, Chow's Wall, it's like because we had to visit. I had to visit it that day because we were getting ready to start uh, the Moon Tower fight, uh, Emily and I. So we went there to rehearse. But we just we knew that, you know, this is out the window. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, this is out the window. And I saw what those guys were doing. And I was just like I was in awe. And Dean's a dancer. The fight, I would say my favorite fight, two of my favorite fights this season that I didn't do would be uh, Sonny mm -hmm. uh, fighting the, the sniper. Yeah. That was yeah. that was dope. That was, that was dope. That was dope. That was yeah. so good. And um Gaius and um and Dean. Yeah. Yeah. And Caster, yeah. Dean yeah. Caster. That was that was I I was there. We have a gym there at the production uh facility. And so I went and watched that on the monitor and I was like, Oh, you know, <laughs> I, I would talk to Dean and was just like, dude, right. it's just a dance routine. You're a dancer. Right. You're a dancer. And he did it. He knocked it out. Oh, I'm they like, whoa. The, the fights never disappoint. Every, yes, you know, every fight disappoint. is is uh, everything. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why that's why like us talking to you, we're just like fanboying out. It's like because <laughs> you watch this stuff and you're like, that's amazing. And yeah, now yeah. You, we're seeing you and we know what you go through to do that and like Oh, it's like damn. trust me, trust me. I'm, I'm right there geeking Even, too. Right, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. you know, every morning I would get up. I would go, man, I can't believe I'm going bad. Right. Ah! It's so well, cool, it's, right? There's it, such a great story. It's not just that's the, the other martial thing too. arts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And these fights, it's the show has grown obviously with viewership, yeah. but it's yeah. just it's not just a martial arts show. And that's what I try it's to not. tell anybody that um, friends, coworkers, whatever it is, just trying to get them into the show if they haven't started right. already, right. is that it's not just a fighting show. The story is, is terrific. And it, Yeah, and you guys brought that up, and I think yeah. I hit you back with a message saying, you know, I think they yeah. balanced it out very well because yeah. they brought actors in who can, if you don't know martial arts, they can pick something up and they work with you to do yeah. so. But it's all about the acting now. Yeah. It is all about the acting. And yeah. and it balanced itself out because the action is going to be there. It was like, I forgot what episode it was, but you guys had mentioned it in uh, one of the shows. It was like 30 minutes before the first fight. Yeah. That was early on in the season, I believe. Yeah. It was like right? 30 was minutes like... before we got into the first fight. So yeah. that was a little test. And nobody complained. No, yeah. no nobody was, complained. We were, we were like riveted. We were like, yes, this is what yeah. we wanted. You know, like yeah. it's just because the lore... Yeah. The lore, yeah. obviously, that's why we do this because it's like we gotta talk about it. Let's put yeah. it on stupid YouTube, you know, like yeah, it's so good. yeah. Well, well, the next eight, I gotta tell you, the next eight, especially for me, uh, as an actor, I get to hit every emotional uh, button as an actor in the next eight, which is very important for me, you know, because I turned down a lot of stuff before this show came along. Yeah, and um, and then to be able to do the show and do the kind of acting that I like to do, I like to do theatrical. Mm -hmm. straight cinematic acting, you know, where nobody's rushing their dialogue and they're trying to get something across. It's all yeah. about two people or three people or whomever's in that scene having a moment, a real moment. Yeah, yeah. And how that's you, what it's all about get, for me. How did you start? Were, were you acting as a child? Did you go from the the, the athletic part of it, the football player, to, to this? Or was there just something inside you? Interesting little thing. Of course, I had cousins. Growing up here in LA, I had cousins in the business and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then fast forward to when I got to high school, I went to high school and college Northwestern with yeah. Jim Bridges, Jr., oh. whose brother is Todd Bridges. Wow. Oh. Their dad was our agent in high school. Oh, get out of here. Oh, wow. So then, of course, Jeez. you know, little commercials here and there, that kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know, I, I wanted to see if I could make it to the big show. So did Jimmy. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I think Jimmy and my cousin, uh, they went to New Mexico State, and I'm like, no, guys, you come, you guys should come to Northwestern. Come to Northwestern. Yeah. So uh, Jimmy and my other good friend, Kevin Brown, uh, we all went to high school, college together. We were all in the business, and they came to Northwestern. And, and Kevin went on to play for the Patriots a little bit, 
And uh, we both decided to like, you know, hang our cleats up around the same time. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So, so we hung our cleats up. And then oddly enough, uh, I knew uh, someone over at Motown and I play almost every in- instrument. So oh, wow, we ended wow. up as we ended up as a. Uh, as staff writers for six months at Motown, right? Oh, wow. But you know, it was come on. I mean, we were still our heads. That, that's yeah, <laughs> our, our heads were still. You know, we were still like, you know, like, you know yeah, man, yeah, you know, like maybe we should just act. We should just <laughs> act, man. <laughs> we should just act. And so everybody just started losing the muscle mass, and you know, we just everybody just started doing what they're doing. And Kevin's yeah. writing, writing a whole bunch of scripts. He's doing well. Everybody's doing well. Jimmy's that's doing good. well. Yes. And so that's how that happened. Now, how I got into martial arts, basically. I was doing a lot of projects that I was doing a lot of fight scene stuff. So 1990, 1996, I was doing this little film called Space Marines. Space Marines, I know. I'm Space Marines, about that. right? And so our fight and stunt coordinator was none other than Danny Tan. Yeah. Louis Tan's Louis dad. Tan's dad, yeah. So at the end of production, he walks up to me and he goes very earnestly, he goes, you need to get into martial arts. You'll be good at it. I said, okay. Fast forward, I, you know, a couple of years, I got my black belt. I had ran into him. I was like, I got my black belt. I got my black belt. He said, good. <laughs> Keep working. That's what you, now the hard work starts. Right. Yeah. And which it does. I mean, you know, you, you think you achieve something, but it's just you have to relearn everything mm-hmm. and just start going all over again and learn new forms and, and patterns and stuff like that. Poopsies. Yeah. Um, and um, I, had a, I had a conversation with him. He had called Lewis. We were hanging out over Aramis's house. He had called Lewis and um, got on the, got on the phone with him, and uh, Skype. It was a Skype call, and he said, "There's only two individuals that I had a conversation. You know, I had a conversation with a lot of individuals, but there's two individuals. I said they need to get into martial arts, and only two of them heeded my my suggestion. Mm-hmm. Was Michael Jai White and you? Oh, you and Spawn, nice. Yeah. So I'm like, and Michael's Michael's a friend, and, yeah, you yeah. know, and a buddy. Oh, so I'm so like, cool. oh man, you know, so. It just there's a saying out here. There's only four living rooms. So watch what you do. Watch what you say. So it is true. There's only four living rooms in L.A., you know, yeah, wow. it's c- crazy. That's so crazy. Oh, you, again, you, you, you hit another another question we were going to ask you. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I see it got dead for a minute. It's like, man, he's, yeah. already, he's getting all these questions. Yeah. No. And you know what? And, and to be honest, we'll, man, we, we kind of we'll, knew we'll it because it, right? because, you know, uh, from what we can tell, you're unlike any other person that's doing this stuff because you oh, not, man. not only are you good at it, you love it, and dude, you know so much about your own show. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that that's like it's so cool, which is yeah. why we're gonna ask you a lot more questions about it now. <laughs> cool, 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 excellent, man. Go for it. Go for um, it. Uh, yeah. We were gonna. I mean, I was gonna. You kind of answered it. We were gonna say, you know, what what can we expect from Moon in the ne- in the in the back gate. You kind of okay. got there. I don't want you to have to do too much. I no, know. It, it's, it's cool. I mean, you know, because uh, I'm excited to talk about that because now we can start talking a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. But I think the most interesting thing, I'm excited to see, you, you know, it's like when you started seeing everybody start falling into place the last season of, of Game of Thrones, how, you know, yeah. people who, <laughs> who, who fought each other and like now they're on the same side kind of thing and it made yeah, you feel yeah. like made you feel good. Yep. Oh, that's yeah. what's going to happen. That's oh. what's going to happen. That, hey, that's, that's music, gonna, music so to our there's, ears. There's, there's an episode called The Magnificent Seven. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Because you, you, you do know that this show is a Kurosawa slash Sergio Leone absolutely. film. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. what we're doing. It's a Western slash yeah. Kurosawa film. It's absolutely, yep. So it just mashes those two things together. And, you know, when I saw, you know, the, the, the writing on the script of Magnificent Seven, I'm like, oh, man, people are going to lose their flipping minds. Oh, this is going right. to be crazy, right. you know. And I mean, it's just going to be it's just going to be great. And just to see it's, it's a trip. It, it, it made me giddy one day when we were all together. Can't tell you who it is, oh. but I'm pretty sure you know who it is. I think we can figure that mm-hmm. out. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, me and one of your favorite characters, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like we're like. You know, kind of like we go at it, we go at it, okay. and but it's funny banter. Yeah. It's funny banter. There's a lot of good stuff between Baji and I. Oh, There's good. a lot of good stuff that's between so Baji and I, and it's and he's just and you know Nick is just Nick is just Nick. Yeah. And Nick's just letting it fly. I mean, he just lets all that stuff fly from his his cerebral cortex. Man, it just flies out. <laughs> and you know. I did improv theater for five years. And so that's what you learn how to do. You learn how to never say no, never kill the moment. Right. There's going to be a funny, funny scene that I stowed from uh, 
when Wolverine flips off Cyclops. Oh, <laughs> oh so it's gonna be so good. I went, I went, and knocked on. Um, uh, Wayne Yip was directing the episode. I'm like, hey man, you know when uh, Baji comes over and he's da 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 da, and we have this dialogue, and he's always winning. Moon's got to win this one, <laughs> yeah. right? Moon's got to win this one. Yeah. And so I, I can tell you that I do, I do flip him the bird. Yeah. Okay. With the with the with the with the with the claw, just bing, you know. Yeah, and it's yeah, so yeah. it's so funny. It's so and it was out of nowhere, and, and, and Nick goes, "Oh, you bastard!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You shut down Nick Frost. That's good. Yeah, you bastard. That's I'm a, like, yeah, I got you. I that's got something you. to be proud of. That should go on Instagram. That should be yeah. like. Take I got to tell day. you, I got to tell you, I don't know how Daniel does it all day, every day. He's with, <laughs> he's, <always> he's with, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Nick, oh. he's not being funny. He's just talking, it's and just, it's funny. Yeah, it's and funny. all you do is just you're here all the time. You're just like this <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So you don't have to do an ab workout. Just come hang out with him, and you'll be just it. 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 all day long. That just is rip crazy. Up. You have an eighty-five pack. <laughs> just for, thank you Nick. i got it's it's abs by by nick frost is what it abs is. by nick frost that's it oh and he's, he's just having a conversation yeah. all you're doing is just yeah 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 <laughs> no mate it re- really wasn't that funny yes it was <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man you got us you got a head spinning if you want to see the rest of this interview with sherman augustus check out part two and if you're like me and you love the 80s why not check out the retro squat youtube channel or you can click one of the videos right here